Greetings brothers and sisters. I'm Professor Spira and in this video I would like to talk about the best vegetables to use for mucusless or mucus free cooked menus. So this is the type of menu that you would put together on the transition diet or the mucusless diet healing system by Professor Arnold Arrett the transition diet or transitional menu. So for those of you, I know, there's a, I know that there's a lot of raw foodists that watch my videos. If you're not interested in any cooked options, if you feel you're beyond ever needing to go back to that, then you could probably skip over this video. For those of you that's just getting started in the diet or if you go through some crazy elimination, you want to have options you want to know what you have available to you and I'm actually going to show you a area that a lot of people seem to miss or try to skip over is the cooked mucusless options cooked mucus free foods so one of the first items that comes to my mind is zucchini now zucchini can be eaten raw and if you add them to a salad raw to me they don't taste like much so I I very rarely will eat them raw in a salad but as a cooked mucusless item they are good as you can bake them Put them in the oven and uh, you know kind of cut them in half and you would put them in the oven I put them about four like 400 degrees and just let them bake for a little while and when you talk about cooking from a mucusless diet perspective as Eric says wrong cooking destroys healing and eliminative value wrong cooking destroys healing value so from our perspective cooked foods aren't inherently inherently evil but you want to have proper combinations always combine it with some kind of raw combination salad but there are certain items that can help you especially in the beginning when you want something heavier in your stomach they can help you on the transition because not everybody can just go from what they were eating all the way over into these higher levels of mucus free living and fruit diet kind of levels you want to understand what transitionary tools you have so zucchini is good I also like to uh, We'll chop it up and put it in a saute an onion saute is another uh, it's really kind of a foundational item that really makes cooked vegetables kind of tasty so that's a level at certain point the the onion saute will not will start to bother you as you as you get more and more sensitive more and more refined that will start to get on your stomach's nerves and so you'll get into just steaming them so you can bake it uh, you can steam them which is probably the cleanest way with no you can steam them you could could put on uh, some kind of spices or not that would be up to you of course there's also yellow zucchini so these are just kind of nice they they're like I said they're kind of heavy and when you are craving something say you're craving some mucus sometimes you can knock that craving out by having an option like some cooked zucchini sweet put uh, a very well baked sweet potato is something that can be used on the transition 
again, when you're craving something, you need something kind of heavy, you might be craving a little bit of mucus, uh, you know, hit the, hit the oven up and throw in a baked potato or, or throw in a, a sweet potato. What you never want to eat, and I almost put it on the same level as meat just for my own view of it, you never want to eat white potatoes. Stay away from white potatoes. Very starchy. Do not eliminate on any level at all. I just recommend steering clear or getting off of white potatoes as fast as possible. And you can, you should be able to easily do that by switching to sweet potatoes. Because sweet potatoes are definitely, I mean, to me, they, they actually taste better. Even if you resort to making like the sweet potato chips or fries or some stuff that you get into. You got to be careful with that kind of stuff because you can get kind of strung out on it. But it is worlds apart from white potatoes. So this is something, again, we're talking about transitionary options. You never want to just eat it alone. Everything that I'm naming today, you will want to eat in company with a, trans, uh, with a combination salad. I have a couple things that I steam and will add to the combination salad or steam. Then I might throw some onion saute over top of them and eat it uh, you know, on, on top of the combination salad like that. But I find steamed broccoli to be effective. I'm not a huge fan of raw broccoli. I never really got into raw broccoli. but lightly steamed and when we talk about cooked vegetables we're not talking about overcooking them that would be bad you don't want to over steam them you don't want them to be soggy you want them to just be a little bit a little bit steamed a little bit warm where they eliminate well because we're always talking about elimination the important thing is creating a meal that is going to eliminate well and not leave behind mucus. You do not want to leave behind a whole bunch of mucus in your intestines uh, and mucus forming foods obviously uh, create that. So broccoli, another thing that I will talk about real quick along with broccoli I ate steamed cabbage for for many years. The, 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 the beginning that was a staple in terms of my mucus-free cooked menus. I would have steamed broccoli, steamed cabbage, put that on top of a combination salad, and that would be that. And so I, you know, definitely had a lot of cabbage in the early years. What started to happen was as I got more refined as my GI tract started to change, cabbage started to really be, it would be like I'd get bloated and it would just wouldn't feel good. It would not eliminate well anymore. So what I did after cabbage was I transitioned to greens, primarily collard greens, although I did explore a lot of the the other kind of greens. So now we're, when we get over in greens, we're gonna start seeing a lot of this this kind of stuff here. But I would just lightly steam it. I wouldn't get into the real heavy. You don't want to cook it like it's you know soul food type of cooking, where you immerse the greens in all these fluids and they sit in a pot and cook all day. You really never want to eat anything like that cooked. You just lightly steam it so we're talking about rational meals and it is something that creates kind of a laxative effect in the intestines again the f reason that we eat this stuff is to aid elimination in the intestines and we don't want to leave behind mucus lightly steamed collard greens is not going to leave behind 
big pieces of of snot in your intestines. They're not mucus forming. But you do not want to overcook them because they will not like this stuff over here does not eliminate well. This overcooked greens and stuff, it does not eliminate very well. So you just want to lightly steam it. Another item that you might be able to get into is squash. Now, of course, they're going to have all kinds of things here that have butter and all kinds of mess that we wouldn't want to put in it. But a, a baked acorn squash is something, again, on these are days when if you just start in the diet and you're craving some, you might be craving meat. You might be sitting there like, man, I really would like a burger or something. What items can you eat that will be heavy, satisfying, and relatively mucus-free? A ste steam squash is relatively mucus-free. It might be just a little bit starchy. And this, we're getting a little bit more into starchier options here because uh, this is a bit more starchy than what we've talked about prior. But it's still relatively mucusless and if it's steamed properly or not steamed well you could steam it but or i mean baked baked properly just cooked properly so we have the acorn squash butternut squash a uh, little different tasting i kind of prefer steam uh sweet potato over butternut squash in general but it's it's is it's kind of similar but i like the sweet potato a little better but it's just another option something else that you can combine with a combination salad and will have an, a laxative effect on your intestines and not leave behind a bunch of cellular waste that is the goal it's what we're trying to do So onions are a stimulant. They are something that the more sensitive your stomach is, they could create a lot of gas and kind of be a, a bit acidic, some, some kind of sulfuric kind of you know, acidic kind of conditions. But overall, you know, I've definitely used onions uh, in the transition I've used them raw and salads as kind of a you know a little condiment give a little flavor also the uh, made onion saute so you put a little oil in a, in a pan chop up the onions make the saute and then you can put that on vegetables or put that on the salad or whatever and it's just tasty for a certain amount of time to your to your you know to your taste buds when you're dealing with vegetables. I know there's a lot of people that swear against onions. If you're not into onions, you don't want onions, stay away from them. It's not a requirement. Don't have to eat onions. But for me, my body tells me if I'm in a period where I don't need to be eating onions, it'll definitely tell me cuz it will become painful it won't might not digest well so there's definitely periods where I've just been totally away from onions but then I usually slowly will transition my way back toward them so that will be the end of this particular installment I want to thank you for tuning in and I will talk with you real soon. Peace, love, and breath.